There are so many different types of vitamin C's. The most natural form is L-ascorbic acid. I talked all about this ingredient in last week's video. So go watch that video to learn more in depth, very important information all about vitamin C and L-ascorbic acid and why it's so hard to use. So for that reason, instead of using L-ascorbic acid, we're gonna be using this ingredient called ascorbyl glucoside. I got my ascorbyl glucoside from Brambleberry. You can get 0.2 ounces of it for $10.99 or one ounce for $49.99. And as of right now, they are the only supplier I know of who sells it. It's been shown in vitro studies to be a potent antioxidant. It's been shown to slow down melanin production along with promoting collagen. It's commonly used in products that can help with hyperpigmentation and it can help with even out the skin tone. Scorbyl glucoside is also really popular in K-beauty and J-beauty, which is why you might be familiar with it. So scorbyl glucoside is a white powder. It's water soluble. It's light and oxygen stable, unlike L-ascorbic acid, which we're not getting into that, like I said, but go watch last week's video if you want to learn all the in-depth important information about vitamin C. The natural pH of ascorbyl glucoside when you dissolve it in water is between two to three but you need to make sure your product's final pH has a pH between five to seven. So you do need to raise the pH when formulating this, with this ingredient. It's also important to add in a chelating agent for stability purposes. And I do have a video that goes in depth about chelating agents. It's for my YouTube members and Patreon members. But there's also a great video by the Institute of Personal Care Science if you guys wanna watch to learn more about chelating agents and why they're important. This ingredient is also heat sensitive. So you wanna add it in below 40 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means it needs to be added in at the end of the emulsion process if your emulsion is being heated up. And if you guys want an in-depth video all about how to make emulsions, which emulsions are lotions, moisturizers, creams, I have an entire series all about emulsions. So you guys can learn all that information in case you aren't familiar with making lotions already. And typically ascorbyl glucoside is used anywhere between one to 2%. And again, it's natural and eco -cert. Since ascorbyl glucoside is harder to source, at least for me personally, again, I can only find it from Brambleberry. I'm not sure where you can find it in other countries. So if you're in India, UK, anywhere that's not the US, let me know where you purchase your ascorbyl glucoside in the comments. That way it can help out some of us who aren't sure where to buy it. But if you still aren't able to find it, there is an alternative EcoCert naturally compliant vitamin C you could use and it's called sodium ascorbyl phosphate. I talked all about it in last week's video and I also posted a formula over on Patreon and it's here on YouTube for my members only where I made a moisturizer using it. Watch last week's video for free to get an sodium ascorbyl phosphate serum formula for free, or if you want a moisturizer formula over on Patreon or here on YouTube, you can sign up to be a member for $5 a month, but you don't only get the sodium ascorbyl phosphate moisturizer formula. You also get every single formula I've ever posted on Patreon, which I post two exclusive videos on there every single month. And I've been posting since 2019 over there. So that's a lot of extra videos. So sign up for Patreon if you have access to Patreon. And if you don't have a Patreon in your country, which I know a lot of places don't, you can sign up here on YouTube to be a YouTube member in the $5 tier to get access to all my exclusive videos and the entire backlog of exclusive videos. Hope to see you over there on Patreon or here on YouTube as a YouTube member. So anyway, here is the formula we're gonna be working with. It's broken up into three parts. I have already added in 0.6% of my pH buffer. I'm using a 10% dilution of sodium hydroxide, and this is going to help raise the pH because like I said, ascorbyl glucoside does lower the pH of your products. It needs to be in a pH between five to seven in order for it to be active in your product. So since I've done a few experiments in the past using this ingredient, I did have a little bit of an idea on how much pH buffer I needed. So I went ahead and added some of that in the formula already. If you want an in-depth video all about pH, here it is, go watch it. I'll have it linked down below. It's 
pretty simple once you understand the concept. I mean, people have to adjust the pH of their pools. So it's a pretty simple thing. It's just, if you aren't familiar with it, it can be a bit confusing. But once it's explained and laid out for you, you're like, oh, that's simple too. So I'm gonna be making a 300 gram batch of this moisturizer and I'm starting with phase A. I'm adding in 163.2 grams of distilled water. You could use a hydrosol like rose water instead or aloe vera liquid if you want. I'm adding in 12 grams of glycerin along with 15 grams of propendiol. I wanted to use a combination of two different humectants just for more hydration. And then 0.3 grams of sodium phytate, which is an EcoCert compliant chelating agent. This also has a high pH, so it will help raise the pH of our products formula a little bit. Then I mixed it in, waited for it to dissolve, and then added in the pH buffer. Now I'm going to place that beaker on my scale and weigh it. I actually forgot to record this part, so this is actually me making another lotion, but you gotta place your beaker on your scale. Make sure your scale is zero, teared, and write down how much it weighs. And this includes the weight of the beaker because we're gonna be heating up this phase and some of the water is going to evaporate and we'll have to add that water back in. Make sure you do that. And then we can move on to phase B. And phase B is all the oil soluble heat safe ingredients. So I got 12 grams of Montanov 68 MB. And when choosing your emulsifier for this, formula, um, I'm using Montana 68 MB. You really want to make sure your emulsifier is okay to be in a low pH level, just in case, because like I said, ascorbyl glucoside has a natural pH between two to three. So your lotion could end up with a pH between like two or three. So you need to make sure your emulsifier is active in that pH. So it doesn't just automatically destabilize. So you have time to raise that pH up. So make sure your emulsifier is active anywhere between like a pH of two up to seven, just to be safe. And the Montano 68 MB is EcoSir, it's natural. And the EK name is Satyral Alcohol and Satyral Glucoside. But you can use any emulsifier you want. If you care about being EcoSir to natural, make sure it's that. But also make sure it can be in a low pH, like two. We're adding in three grams of acetyl alcohol. This will help stabilize the formula and thicken it up a bit. Then 45 grams of any oil of choice. I stuck with a natural oil, just keep this more like natural and eco cert. So I use sweet almond oil. And then I used 15 grams of lemon peel oil. And this is really important guys. This is different from lemon essential oil. Lemon essential oil is photo uh, toxic. So it can make you more prone to hyperpigmentation and sunburn and stuff, which is literally the opposite of what we're trying to do with this moisturizer. We want this moisturizer to be brightening to help with hyperpigmentation since that's what ascorbyl glucoside is good for. So I decided to add in that lemon peel oil because lemon peel oil can help brighten the skin, fade dark spots, all that stuff. So I figured it worked good for this formula. And feel free to customize this formula to add in any other ingredients you would like to help brighten the skin. Just make sure it's compatible with all the other ingredients in this formula and make sure it's okay in that pH level as well. So now moving on, we're going to heat up both of our phases. You wanna cover both phase A and B with some foil. This just helps prevent anything from falling in and also I, I think it might reduce some of the water from evaporating. I don't know, I just know I need them covered. And put them in a water bath which is a pan filled with like an inch or so of water, depending on how big your beakers are. And then put it on medium heat and wait for these to heat until they reach about 70 degrees Celsius or 158 degrees Fahrenheit. And you wanna make sure everything in phase B is melted as well. So first you wanna remove phase A because this is our water phase and you wanna place this back on your scale and see how much water evaporated. Normally it's like one gram or less. It just depends on how long you left it on the heat. So replace that water, add that water back in. I actually just add in room temperature distilled water and that seems to work fine. And then you can go ahead and remove phase B from heat and you can pour your phase A into B and then immediately mix with your immersion blender. And you do wanna make sure you're using an immersion blender, a hand mixer won't work. Then you can just set that to the side and let everything cool. Now we can work on it phase C. These are the heat sensitive ingredients. I have 15 grams of distilled water in my beaker and I added in six grams of 
licorice root extract. And then I added in six grams of the ascorbyl glucoside. The distilled water and the licorice root extract will help dissolve this ascorbyl glucoside. And also licorice root extract has some brightening benefits. Then I added in three grams of Uxal K900. This is an EcoCert compliant preservative. You can use whatever preservative you want. The inky name is benzyl alcohol and ethyl hexyl glycerin. But again, use whatever EcoCert compliant preservative you have, just make sure it's active in the pH of this product. And then lastly, added in 1.5 grams of the vitamin E. I use mixed tocopherols T50. Then once your lotion has cooled to around 40 degrees Celsius, that's like 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you can pour in your phase C and mix until everything is well combined. And once it has returned to room temperature, go ahead and cover it with plastic wrap and let it sit overnight. And then the next day, you wanna make sure you check the pH. You could also check the pH the day before, but I had things to do. I didn't have time. Check the pH. My natural pH was 3.48. So the pH was raised a little bit due to the pH buffer, but it didn't raise enough. It needs to be between five to seven. Let me show you guys how I made the pH buffer because we're gonna to have to add in a little bit more. So you wanna start with sodium hydroxide, not potassium hydroxide. Make sure it's sodium hydroxide. You can get this on Amazon. I'll have some link down below. And you wanna add 10% sodium hydroxide into 90% distilled water. So pour the sodium hydroxide into water. Don't do it the other way around. Make sure you have on long sleeves. You do this outside, have a mask on, have gloves, cause it can be a bit dangerous. Soapers do this every day. Once you understand how to do it, it's pretty simple as long as you follow the safety precautions. Don't let it get on your skin. And you'll notice it heats up and sizzles right after you pour the sodium hydroxide into the water. That's fine, that's normal. Let it just chill until it stops sizzling. Wait for it to clear, cause it'll get all smoky. Wait for it to clear. And then basically after that, you're like, all right, I, I can pick you up and bring you inside. That's about the time I bring it inside. Then you wanna let it cool completely to room temperature before you store it away. And you wanna make sure you store it in really thick plastic. I've read that it should be HDPE number two plastic. So make sure it's just, it's thick plastic. That's the best place to store it. Don't store it in glass. I think I've said that in the past to do that and you shouldn't do that because it can actually explode over time. And make sure you label it. Yeah, this clip is from 2021. Yeah, this will. This buffer is normally good for about a month. You don't need to put a preservative in it because it has such a high pH. It's naturally preserved, similar to soap. And you can just keep this stored in a dark cabinet and use it anytime you need to raise the pH of your products. Again, just make a new one monthly. You can also buy a stock of this. I think it's 20% sodium hydroxide dilution from Formulator Sample Shop if you don't want to make your own and you can use that to help raise the pH. You could also use TEA, but this ingredient is not EcoStir or naturally compliant. So that's probably why you wouldn't want to use it. But the sodium hydroxide, your product still would be naturally compliant because sodium hydroxide is used to make soap and soaps considered natural. So after I made my pH buffer, I added a few drops into my lotion. I mixed it in. I let it sit for a minute before I took the pH again. And then when I took the pH again, the pH was 5.84, which is great. It needs to be anywhere between five to seven. So I just left it there. I think I said this earlier in the video, but if you want an in-depth video all about pH, go watch this video. No, I might, it might be over here, but go watch it all about pH because it's so important when formulating. And for packaging, I actually decided to use these airless pump jars. These are my new favorite types of jars. I'm obsessed with them. I just have a thing about not wanting to stick my hands in jars anymore. Just keeps things cleaner. And you can purchase this, these on Amazon. I know they got them there. I really like this lotion. I did not expect it to turn out so great because it was just a formula I threw together and I really like it. I, I need to formulate with this emulsifier more because I love this emulsifier. I just love the simplicity of this formula. I know there's a lot of ingredients in it, but they all are pretty much necessary. If you want to minimize this formula a bit, you can use just one humectant instead of a glycerin and a propendiol. And then you could use just one oil instead of two oils. Also, if you don't have licorice root extract, you can use whatever extract you want instead. But other than that, all the ingredients are necessary for this formula to keep it stable. And yeah, I really like it. It feels great on my skin. It's super moisturizing. It feels really soft and really light on the skin. It's perfect for this time of year. I'd say this moisturizer is great for anybody 
who is looking to treat hyperpigmentation, obviously, but also somebody who wants a moisturizer that feels hydrating and is, I don't wanna say on the heavier side, but it does have natural oil, like sweet almond oil. So it will feel a little bit heavier compared to, I'm getting a scam phone call right now, compared to the sodium ascorbyl phosphate moisturizer I made over on Patreon. This vitamin C derivative, sodium ascorbyl phosphate, is actually great for those with acne and oily skin and sensitive skin types. So that's why I would say that this sodium ascorbyl phosphate or SAP for short moisturizer would be better for those with oily acne prone skin and sensitive skin types. But if you have mature skin, they're calling me again. If you have, no, it's a whole different number. If you have mature skin, dry skin, or uh, I'd say normal skin types, then go for the ascorbyl glucoside. What I was just thinking, what if we combined those two ingredients together? Would they work together? Let me think. SAP needs to be in a pH between six to seven. You know what, you could, since ascorbyl gl glucoside needs to be in a pH between five to seven. So if we made a moisturizer with a pH of six, we could probably combine both of these vitamin C derivatives. Just some ideas I'm throwing out there, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the formula. Let me know what ingredient you wanna see me formulate with next. Comment below. All right, later. Also, don't forget to go over and check out my Patreon where I post two exclusive videos every single month. So there is a ton of videos you can go over there and binge watch for only $5 a month. You get access to the entire backlog. And for $10 a month, you can get a shout out for your small business. So let's shout everybody out. Naturesfarmgirl.com. Let's blend LLC at Stardust Bath and Body on Instagram. Hempygirl.com shoplevis.com, owl and lily on etsy, embracebeautyessentials.com, legendary bath and body, astari apothecary, raviga cosmetics here on youtube, exorebb.com, pardonaturals.com, natural state skin, the nature in us.ca, nearcatelier.com, use the code on the screen for 20% off, earth and amber naturals.com, shark city naturals, day to relax spa, crowned glory llc, lh scented soaps and more, janae rose, Health Nut Beauty on Etsy, VelvetTemptations.com, Journey Rose Beauty, CHRBrands.com, Homestead Life Goods on Etsy, VanillaBathAndBody.com, Madhouse Mama Soaps, XPo.com, Mystical Morning on Etsy, and the rest of these brands haven't launched yet, SkinByDevu.com, Seventh House and Oak on Etsy, at Black Petal Beauty on Instagram and mycrownandglowery.com. Thank you guys so much for your support. Literally, without you guys on the Patreon, I wouldn't be able to continue doing what I do. So thank you so much. <laughs>